Hello friends, welcome back. Welcome to a, a new vlog. This is somewhat of a vlog decorate with me. We're going to decorate our guest bedroom. My sister is coming to visit and I'm so excited. It's gonna be her first time seeing the house. My parents did come shortly after we moved in and I just had the room like very basic, not decorated at all. Just like bed, nightstands, lamp. But now I wanna actually like finish the room and really, you know, prepare it for guests and company. We've been here long off and I think it's time to complete our guest room so I did do a DIY art piece and with fabric so I went for like a sculpture fabric art piece on the wall and spoiler it did not come out as expected or hoped but I did get an art piece out of it and we will be hanging it up so anyway I'm gonna share that with you guys but I think what we'll start with is Let's go and do the room first. We'll start setting up, do all of our prep for the guests. I'm gonna share with you guys kind of like a checklist I've put together of what to add for company, for visitors, just so our guest room is like finished and ready. So I'm gonna share it with you guys and then I'll share the artwork, the fabric, sculpture fabric, DIY wall art piece with you. And then I'll give you like the final look, like the room transformation, final look reveal at the end. Okay, here's the before. The room is kind of trashed because I have a bunch of stuff that I've picked up to decorate in here, to set up. I think the pillows are looking a little bit sad and I don't have any sham covers for this set. Um, so I got this set in Home Goods and I was gonna see like how it looks in here. Home Goods, right? $30 for both. And I think they're really, really pretty. I liked the stitching detail in here. I feel like I needed to like iron these sheets or pillowcases or something. They look so wrinkly, but I just need to figure out maybe this will look good in front of it. Um, the other thing that I got is this little pillow. I can't actually figure out if it goes this way or this way, but it, I thought it was like the perfect coastal collection because it fits with kind of our beachy or, you know, coastal boho look, like very modern and neutral. The coral and the fish like beaded on here, the detail. I think it's just very um, coastal in a subtle way. So I liked that. And what was the price? Oh, I was gonna say 15, 12.99. I did get one other, no, two other pillows. Oh, they're both small. Okay, so that's our only larger pillow option. The other ones are, oh my goodness. Okay, so another option to go in the front would be this one. Okay, so both of these are target options, this one and this one. I don't know though, because I feel like they would be too small to really hide your wrinkly pillows in the back. So I'm kind of thinking, that this goes in the front and then I keep these two. There's two other options. Okay, so just looking at this, I don't like the darker one. I do like the lighter one. It's a great match. The texture's nice and everything in here, but I can't stand how we can just see like the, the wrinkly sheets. So what if we tuck this fold to toward the inside so that on the outside of the pillow, you just get like the clean neat side. Oh, yeah, we have to put the glass top. All right, I'm thinking I'm keeping the coastal pillow. I think it really completes the room. Does Ikea still make these glass tops? I don't think so. No? This is, we got this like a long time ago, yeah, right? Yeah. Back when the mom, hold on, <laughs> the mom dresser had these glass tops on them. This was really nice to 
protect your surface, especially if you're gonna set like a drinking glass or anything, anything liquid up there, perfume, bottles, cosmetics. Oh, I like this. So without having a sham, I feel like it's coming together. So I picked up these um, Studio McGee lidded boxes. They're kind of like a, they feel a little bit like a faux leather. And at first I thought the top would be hinged, but the top actually just lifts directly off like that. Um, and I'm thinking, first I was thinking that it would be good for just any kind of like essentials that you want to have in your guest room. And I think it's perfect for that, but I decided to do the smaller one with the essentials and then this larger box to put snacks and goodies in. And I have a little assortment of things here. We've got some cashews. These are little individual packs for on the go. These are roasted salted cashews. I also picked up some of these IQ bars. They're a plant protein bar, chocolate sea salt. I think I've had these before. Um, pretty sure I've had the IQ bars and they're pretty good. It's not high in sugar and it does have a lot of protein in it. Maybe put one of these in, we'll see. I got a couple to put in the car. I thought the tropical splash would be fun. Also picked up some gum. Oh, and then I also, let me show you guys. So in this drawer, I also did some assortment of popcorns that you could take on the go and then some little mini water bottles to take on the go. These little packages, they're like half the size of what I thought they would be, but that's okay because I think they'll still be like convenient for an on the go snack. we have in here is some dry shampoo, some hairspray, a ultra healing hand lotion or skin moisturizer, some makeup removing wipes, also a little toothpaste sample. I figure most people probably bring their own toothbrush, although it's not a bad idea to pick up like one of the little travel case ones um, from Dollar Tree. Um, and then I also thought it might be good to pick up Tylenol. Maybe I'll just keep one in here that somebody could help themselves to. Okay, so let me know you guys what else you think I'm missing that I should add. I also have one more brand new um, native deodorant, cucumber and mint. I'm just gonna see if I can fit a few extra little things down in here. Will the shaver fit? Possibly not. I do have a little floss. Let's see if we can fit a little chapstick and you know what we don't need this in the box do we aren't the toothpaste generally already sealed yeah they're sealed so let's just let's just leave the toothpaste in here there we go beautiful So I heard for your guest room, you should provide a laundry hamper. And I thought that was a great idea. If something's wet, um, maybe you wanna hang it somewhere, depending on you know, the situation, if you're gonna hang it in the bathroom or not. I really wanted to do like a wicker woven rattan type um, laundry hamper, but those usually have a fabric liner on the inside and like you're not gonna wanna put anything wet in there. So I got the same one for the guest room that I have in our bathroom in our master bathroom. I really like it. I'm going to link it for you guys. It's plastic. It kind of looks a little bit like it's woven type, you know, rattan. I feel like it fits with our coastal boho type of decor. It's plastic. So if you have anything wet, if anything's a little bit damp, whether you want to set it on top, hang it over the side, you know, you have that flexibility here. And it's a slim, like narrow fit. So in our last house, I was keeping this hamper in between the wall and the washing machine. We had like a narrow little space and this fit beautifully.
perfect. So anyway, I think it's gonna fit nicely right in here. And the other thing I realized that was missing is a trash can waste basket. And since our dogs will get into the garbage, we got one with a lid. Anyway, I like that it has that plastic liner that you can remove on the inside. It's a step can, it has the lid, pretty inexpensive. I think this one's perfect to put in the corner of our guest room. I think we're finally ready to tackle our wall art piece I have behind me. Now I actually had some leftover like doggy pee pads. So I decided, you know what? Why not use them for this? I'm not using them for anything else and I don't have anything to cover the table for. So this will be the perfect occasion to use them and hopefully because I overlap them so hopefully it'll catch any of the drips or anything that would run off. I've never worked with like plaster and fabric before so I'm a little bit apprehensive about it especially given the size that this is a 36 by 48 inch canvas. It's pretty large. I am excited, a little bit nervous, um, but let's go ahead and get started. I've been looking online. I've got some ideas, some, I mean, I've seen people do these type of like, um, like looks like a sculptural design with fabric. I've seen them do it multiple different ways. So I think I've formulated the route I want to take doing it, but let's go ahead. We're going to see if we can come up with something very neutral, coastal, beachy, boho, you know, something that'll just fit with kind of a modern coastal home decor. And hopefully it looks good in our guest room wall. <laughs> started out with this wall art canvas DIY by taking a bowl of some water and mixing some plaster in there. I picked up this material at Michael's in the um, fabric section and then after I got this to kind of being like a loose runny pancake batter, I added some wood glue in here as well and then I went ahead and just covered my material in this but you guys will notice that there's a lot of sections left where for whatever reason this particular material wasn't very absorbent and the plaster was kind of clumping on it and not fully absorbing into it. I don't know if I should have left it more wet and runny. Either way you guys will see this didn't go quite as smoothly as hoped. I'm really unhappy <laughs> with how this is looking. Like I can lift it right off and clearly it held on to too much of the plaster like it's chunky but it also it, it also is not adhering to this canvas either so i think we're going to redo it with a thinner material i think this was just too thick to get like a nice smooth cover and i'm also going to do less of the plaster and i think i'm going to completely skip the wood glue in it i don't know if that created an issue but um, we'll see. I'm thinking of painting a coat of the Mod Podge maybe right onto the bottom of the canvas where I'm gonna lay this down and then just mixing the plaster and water, which seems to get super hard normally. I think I have too much wood glue in here though because like the plaster should be hard and it's still like very wet and like it's crumbly in spots, but clearly, this is supposed to get hard and it's quite flexible. So I think, I don't, I, I don't know. The only thing I can think would be, it, it's gotta be the wood glue that did this, that it's just not like, maybe I had too much of it in there. <laughs> probably, probably that's why. But let's, let's redo this with a thinner material. I'm gonna use like a sheer curtain panel and hopefully I can get that less like thick crinkles and more like gentle waves. <laughs> You guys, I am so disappointed with how this turned out, but seriously, this has gone nothing like what people describe. Um, so 
so I don't know. I don't know if it was the wood glue or just that this material was so thick that the plaster wasn't like mixed well. I don't really know at this point. I'm gonna try another route here, applying some Mod Podge. Uh, this might be a disaster, I don't know. But at this point, I feel like I don't really know what to do because a lot of people are saying and doing different things, which is kind of frustrating when you're trying to learn how to do something and like the best way to do it. And I'm just clearly seeing um, you know, contradictory things. Like I'm seeing people use strictly plaster and water and they're saying that their artwork, it worked. They show like how it finished and it looks great and all this stuff. And then when I read online, other articles will tell you like just plaster and water will not adhere to canvas. It's not gonna stick because you need something. It'll just crack basically. Um, with any movement of the canvas, it's just gonna crack. And then there's people who are like, mine didn't, mine's perfect, it looks good, and there's no issue. So I, at this point, I don't know like who to believe or what to believe. <laughs> I'm basically just gonna go in this and just give it my best shot. I'm gonna do a very thin layer of Mod Podge. Some people say you need to coat the canvas with the water and plaster, but then other things I read just say water and plaster is not gonna stick at all anyway, so. I don't really know who to believe at this point. I think it's just gonna be trial and error. I don't know. I'm gonna try to make it kind of like a thick milk consistency. I'll try to get it kind of like, I don't know, like oat milk maybe? Should I do gloves? That is the next question. You know what, I'm not gonna do gloves because I don't have the latex gloves. I know you should probably like, it would be good to use gloves, but those big rubber ones, they honestly, they made it really difficult for me yesterday to shape the fabric just because they were so thick. So, you know, I can go wash my hands after. Look, it's just, yeah, I'll wash my hands as soon as I'm done. So it's way waterier than yesterday. I'm trying to make it so that it's not gonna leave any powdery, thick, chunky coating on here like yesterday. <laughs> I That I definitely don't think was supposed to happen. So at this point, I'd rather do like too little than too much. And I know plaster starts setting up in like five minutes. So uh, I don't have much time. So this has now, it's about 9 p.m. This has been drying since, gosh, what time? Uh, maybe about five or six hours now. And you can see certain ones are like, it's still pretty flexible, definitely not as firm as I was like hoping. However, the Mod Podge underneath, I think really worked because I feel like it's, very securely stuck onto the canvas. So that's great news. Yeah, it still, it still has some flexibility. So I'm thinking I'm going to take a little bit of water here, mix some plaster in, and then do another coat because it feels like everything's feeling pretty dry. The Mod Podge appears dry. Uh, yeah, so it feels pretty dry. I'm gonna do that with a little more plaster and hopefully that'll, make these lines a bit more um, solid and rigid. So they're a little less flexible, but anyway, overall, I'm feeling pretty good about it because, yeah, that looks so weird. I did go over it. Is that, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh no, is that from? Mod Podge? I think that's from the plaster. Why is it cracking there? 
Oh, that's so weird. Uh-oh. Like here, right? It looks like it could crack. But clearly there's areas like this where there's just not much plaster on here. So I don't know what to do. Like, do I do more Mod Podge or do I do more plaster? But I think I'm going to mix up a little more plaster and give it a try. You guys, I'm getting tired of working on this project. So I went over it with a third coat of the plaster and then very thin coat of the plaster and then with some Mod Podge it's had a little bit of a chance to dry I mean the Mod Podge is not wet but it's still tacky um, at this point like there's some flexibility to it and there's a lot of parts that like I'm really happy with but <laughs> there's a lot of parts like up here I don't know what's with these shadows today I think because of the weird lighting because we're having rain outside but there's a lot of parts where, look look at this, it's like flaking off and oh, it's just oh, so frustrating because I don't wanna hang this up. Like it's not gonna even, even if it looks like sculptural, it's not gonna give the appearance or illusion of being liquid or water um, when it's like flaking and crumbling, you know? So at this point, I don't know what to do. Like, it's very securely attached over here. And again, at this end, like, I can still lift some of it up. Look at that. Oh, why? I don't know what to do. At this point, I'm kind of thinking I should remove it again. Look, oh, look at this. A chunk just fell off. See, we can't have that. I think maybe... I need to pull this off as frustrating as that's going to be and disappointing. Maybe, what do they say? Third time's a charm. Also going to iron this material because I don't feel like having the wrinkles <laughs> be an issue and I don't know for sure if they were an issue but I think it was making it harder it was just making it take longer for me to get it um, you know smooth and neat and I think you know if you're going for just a random art piece I feel like this would be so much easier but every wrinkle I felt like I needed to get it in, in place correctly because I was trying to give the illusion of waves and water. Kind of like how this water part has come out. I'm gonna leave it because I know it's starting to dry underneath that all that Mod Podge. Good thing I put a lot down. Um, I think that was kind of important. I'm not gonna mess with it too much. I'm gonna paint over the top of it now with more Mod Podge and let it dry.
So I thought this iridescent bronze was really pretty looking and I want to just kind of like tap and fleck some of it across this brown portion. Okay, the guest room is just about finished. Are you guys ready to see the reveal of the artwork on the wall? And here is the reveal of our guest room. So one other thing I heard a lot of people saying that you should get for your guest bathroom or to have for company is a toilet plunger. So we technically have a toilet plunger, but I think I should have two plungers, one in each bathroom that a guest could use. And then it has like this thing. So you, you put it down in and the top closes on it. So here is a look at the guest bathroom and i do need to wash that mat i'm gonna throw that in the washing machine but here's how it's looking i picked up some purple shampoo i know my sister mentioned she likes purple shampoo my mom picked this one up in ross actually she picked up both of these so i just leave them in here my sister can, or mother-in-law can use it when they're here we have some towel oh, what is this i need to cut that little tag thingy off um we've got some towels here from Target? Yeah, I think these are all from Target. Extra toilet paper. I unwrap them because I think the white is just prettier out of the wrapper. And then up here I have full bath size towels and here's hand towels. So one thing we never did in here was actually put a place to set like shampoo, conditioner and things like that. But I feel like maybe I should add something. What do you guys think? Should we add like a little corner stool to put some like bottles on or we could put a rack on the wall i'm not exactly sure but i feel like we should probably do something so that it's not just sitting on the floor over there and then we just have our hand soap q-tips i like to leave here i wanted to show you guys the closet over here as well so this is basically a storage closet and these are my garden covers in here extra like toilet scrubbers toilet paper paper towels and then just have like extra blankets for when the kids have sleepovers or anything like that um and then so basically i had these left over we didn't need them they're from our last house nobody's using them right now at the moment and so i thought maybe it would be perfect i just got these little dollar tree stickers i had them already in my craft stuff and i figured you know what let me make a section for like my parents and sister oh my mother-in-law too she's here the most so i put hers right in the front but um for them especially just because in case they want to buy anything here and leave it they'll have a place to do that like when they go shopping here if they want to keep some of their own products here they'll be able to do that so let's have a quick chat on sound machines i'm very curious do you guys like to sleep with complete quiet stillness peace quiet silence or if you like to have a background noise or si uh, si sound machine 
<laughs> sound, background sound, sleep music, uh, what do you like? So personally, I kind of like, if I'm gonna have a sound machine on, I like it to be um, green, no I think it's called green noise. I, I really like that. It's basically like white noise, but I think it's a little bit like lower, deeper sound and less of like a lot of them can be more of a static sound. And I think this one, if I had to describe the difference, some sounds more like TV static. And I feel like the green noise sounds a little bit more like you're under the water, kind of. It's like a deeper sound than like a high, like shh. <laughs> Sorry for my bad sound effects, but let me know. If you guys like a sound machine, are you more like the white noise or do you like something more specific? Like thunderstorm, rain, rain on the roof sounds, ocean waves, wind, you know, what, what kind of sounds do you like if you had to use a sound machine? Okay, let me show you guys what we have now for our Easter lunch. We've got a regular lasagna with cheese, with ricotta, and then this one is a tofu one. I'm trying a new recipe. I did put spinach in here, but it's like a tofu cashew ricotta, and I tasted it. It was really good. Oh, I didn't taste the lasagna, but I tasted the cheese portion. It was really good. So hopefully this came out good. And then pineapple upside down cake. We have to take it out after. So that's ready. And then the little chocolate pudding cups are gonna be for the kids to decorate later with like little Easter bunnies and sprinkles. <laughs> 